Hey y'all, this is Jeremy from Production Den. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be discussing automation clips and how to use them in FL Studio. But before we get into that, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you get alerted every time we put out a new video. Let's jump in. All right, so now we're gonna jump into FL Studio and I just put together a really simple little pattern. It has some drums, it has an electric guitar, a bass, and then a, a string patch that's going on. So for this particular song, this is the basic gist of it right here. All right, so you get the idea. So it's pretty simple. Um, and the first thing a lot of people wanna do with automation is to actually automate the volume of a particular channel. So they either wanna do some sort of a fade in or a fade out on something. So I'm gonna take this bass track and I'm going to um, left click on that little icon that's right beside it. And I'm gonna say automate and I'm gonna say volume. And it's gonna create this purple track that's over top of it um, that is automating the volume over the entire track. Uh, so one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a track below it. So I'm gonna click on track five, hold the shift and right or scroll wheel up so that the track comes right below the bass track. And then I'm going to drag that down and then I'm going to uh, group this track with track above and uh, auto name the clip, the bass, and then choose that same yellow color and say, okay. So now it's all showing up that that's the bass. And I just like to organize it that way so you keep things together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and zoom in a little bit and you'll see up front, if we press the Y tool, it kind of is a preview tool for audio you'll hear that there's a little bit of noise that happens on the bass before it actually starts playing. So let's listen to that real quick. So what I'm gonna do is actually automate that out with the volume. You could just normally slice it off, but I'm gonna show you how to use the tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the pencil tool. We're gonna go to that first point and we're gonna say copy this value. And whenever we right click somewhere on this line, it's gonna create a new point. Um, and I wanna keep it as a smooth point right now. And what I'm gonna do is paste that value so I know that I'm starting at the same volume across. Um, and then I'm gonna bring this other side down. And what that's gonna do is bring down the volume for this first section. So let's do that. And all right, and then we can adjust this tension on this curve and I'm gonna bring it down so that it just cuts out all the sound that's happening there. So you'll hear it before, it's this section. And then once I engage this new thing, you'll hear nothing. So that's the basic use of that. Um, but you can do a lot of other creative things as well. You could do a fade out on the end, but there's also a lot of interesting things that you can do with these automation curves, this volume stuff. So I'm gonna show you a couple of little quick examples. I'm gonna take a section right here in the middle. I'm gonna create two more points. And then what I'm gonna do is actually right click on that point and you'll see that there's a whole list of options that are there. So you have things like smooth and hold and single curve, single double curve, blah, 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 blah. So you can create all kinds of weird options. Like you could create pulse. And then if you go in here and you adjust something, you'll see that you can actually create some, like a pulsed volume situation if you wanted to do that maybe for right here, which would be really, really strange. I'm not sure why you would want to do it, but you could if you wanted to. So it just does some weird stuff with the volume there. They also have things like wave, which is basically a sine wave. If you adjust the tension, you adjust how many different little waves you'll have in there and you can adjust the height between those things. So it'll come in here and do this. And I'm not sure why you would wanna do that, but just to know that there's some options for different ways that you can affect the volume. You don't just have to use one single curve to do fade in and fade out. You can also do some other interesting things as well. So the next thing that I actually wanted to do on this track was mess with the EQ on this guitar part. So what I wanted to have happen is take the EQ and start it out to where it sounds like it's, um, a lot of the sound is taken away from it. So it sounds really muffled and then just kind of slowly fades into being the full 
uh, sound of the guitar. So what I did to do, what I did is I put an EQ on the guitar, this parametric EQ. And then what we're going to do is we're actually gonna automate this. So I'm gonna show you manually what this would do and then we'll work through it. So we'll start here with this kind of a sound. So it'll just kind of open up the sound of the guitar through the first part of that. And I only really want to do this in the first section of it. So what I'm actually going to do is right click and drag and just show FL Studio that I just really want to do it for this first part of it. And then what I'm going to do is tab back so I get to that. And really what I'm controlling is this right here. So this knob in that bottom right corner over here is telling me what frequency this uh, filter or this cutoff is operating at. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and we're going to say create automation clip. And you'll see that it's actually made the automation clip only apply right in this little section that we highlighted here. So what I'm going to do is actually um, same kind of thing. I'll come down here, click on track six and hold the shift and scroll up so that it's under the correct track. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing, auto name, and then I will group it with the track above. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start over here, going back to our pencil tool, and we're going to bring this down. And what you'll notice is as we go over here, you'll see it's over here and then through time it kind of spreads up. So all it's done is it's taken that one parameter and we've created program that tells FL Studio how we want to operate that knob. So we're telling it to, to slowly open that thing back up. So it now this channel sounds like this. It's going to start here and slowly open up. So now in context of the song, I'm sorry, it's gonna sound like this. I'm gonna deselect this by pressing Control D so it doesn't just loop and it'll go. So you hear it kind of opening up and you can watch it visually that it's slowly turning this knob down here and opening up this EQ for that particular sound. Now, one thing I wanna caution you guys on is if you come in here and you decided that you maybe wanted to go the opposite way, so you decided that you wanted to do something a little bit different in here, maybe you wanted to bring it back down, so you created a second point in here, and you had that slowly fade up, but then you decided that you wanted to bring this down the only thing I'm gonna caution you about is if you bring it down but you don't set it back to its original value, you can actually just completely cut off the sound. So what you'll notice here is if I engage this and I go from here, it's opened up, but then it completely shuts down and now the sound is completely gone. So when you're doing automations and you only automate a portion of it, just make sure be careful where you end up your value because if you want the sound to be there for the rest of the song you may need to to get it back to that original start point so i'm going to take this copy this value and paste it here and then i'm going to bring this down or actually i'm just going to delete this point so now it's back to a place where it's just slowly opening up And then once it gets past that end, it'll still play the guitar past that point because it hasn't cut the sound completely off. So just make sure that you pay attention to that when you're actually doing these automations that you don't cut your sound completely out because you might be wondering where the sound actually went after that. And that's the reality of what happened. So the last thing I want to show you guys in this song, I'm using Massive X for the string sounds. So this particular sound is this one right here. And let's say that for that sound, I actually want to automate um, the reverb plugin here. So I'm adjusting this plugin right here. 
is the one that I want to automate. But if I right click on it, there's no option to automate it because it's not a native plugin for FL Studio. So I have to figure out a different way to go about automating it. So I want to turn the knob that I want to mess with and then I'm going to actually come up here to where this knob is right here and I'm going to right click it. And it's telling me the last uh, knob or the last function that I was messing with was the Massive X 06 reverb knob. And that's the one that I want to create the automation clip for. So I'm going to say create automation clip. And what that's going to do is add in a new clip below it. And it's going to allow me to then mess with that knob. So let's say through the entire song, I want to go ahead and increase this reverb a little bit throughout so that it just gets more reverby, more drenched in, in the sound throughout that um, song. So what we're gonna do is maybe come over here towards the end and we'll just simply add in so it, it goes from a value of, it's telling you what that point is. So right there, it's at 76%. If you look up at that top corner, it'll tell you. And then over here, it's down at 28%. So if we watch Massive and listen to just this, what you're gonna see is that that reverb knob is going to go from that like 28% down here at the very start of it up to like 76%. So watch this reverb knob as it goes through and you'll see what's happening here. See, it's just kind of slowly climbing because we've set that automation up to be able to do that throughout the whole song. It's not overly impressive, but at least you know now how when you have a third party plugin, uh, and you can even do this with effects, not only instruments, but effects, you just have to adjust the, the knob or the parameter that you want to create an automation for and then just use that tool up here in FL Studio, this multi-link to controllers, and then tell it that you want to create an automation clip from that last parameter that you were tweaking. So that's a way that you can use third-party plugins like things from Native Instruments or if you have FabFilter or Waves or any of those other kinds of plugins and you want to automate those different pieces, you can do that um, by fiddling with one that you wanna mess with and then creating an automation clip from that. I hope that was helpful for you guys to be able to figure out how to use the FL Studio automation clips in your projects. I know I didn't cover the full range of everything that could be covered because frankly, it can automate just about anything in FL Studio and third-party plugins and everything else in between. So it's hard to cover all the bases, but if you have any specific questions, you can leave those down in the comment section below. Again, if you're not subscribed, um, just go ahead and do it and turn on the notification bell to let you know that when the next video gets published, if you like the video, like it so other people can know about it as well. And I will see you in the next round.